fully express that without talking for quite a long time. Oh no, man, that that is no problem. That actually, but I do have to ask a question, and I'm just gonna admit I'm completely ignorant on what is the Satanic Trinity. Uh, the Satanic Trinity would essentially be, um, you know, um, the false prophet and the Antichrist. They're they're always a team. Uh, if you if you read the prophecies of the Antichrist, the false prophet he consistently gives. Uh, tries to get people to worship the Antichrist. He creates the image that and, and the mark and everything. He keeps pointing people back to the Antichrist, the false prophet does. Um, and that's essentially exactly what the Holy Spirit's job is in Christianity. This is all a counterfeit that Satan is, has come up with to, to sort of mock God. Uh, the, the other part of that trinity is, the, is Satan himself. He, it says in the Bible that he will give authority and power to the beast and the false prophet. That, 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 uh, they are essentially empowered by him, and and I guess that would be obviously God uh, in in that in that uh, model. So if you actually look at that um, phoenix rising out of the ashes, or the double-headed eagle, is a lot of time it's referred to Albert Pike's book Morals and Dogma. Um, there is uh, you'll see a representation, I believe, of of exactly that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah that was yeah, totally new to me. But no, I mean. Yeah, and and also you mentioned there, I was just taking notes because, yeah, you hit on a lot of good points in that. Um, but you say, uh, you talk about how they're in the mainstream movies and TV, you see have all these messages of, yeah, you know, like the documentary saying that we were seeded by aliens and all this propaganda. And, you know, you can verify that with things like 9-11. I mean, we had, you know, there's a TV episode, The Lone Gunman, about the government flying a plane into the World Trade Centers before 9-11 happened. You know, we have... So there are things, you know, it is conditioning. We have solid evidence of that. So, yeah, I would say 2012 and something involving yeah, extraterrestrials or aliens is a good bet. But in your perspective, I mean, I know this is a prediction, So, and, and no one has a crystal ball, but I'm just asking your honest opinion. Do you think um, there is going to be something happen on 2012, but it'll just be manufactured, obviously? Do you think maybe 2012 is just hype for a Illuminati false flag? Uh, if anything happens, it will be a false flag, in my opinion. And the reason I say that is that the the different reasons that people claim that things will happen, and, and I've I've been through uh, just about every possible one, galactic alignments of, of both types, astro logic, astro uh, logical, and astro uh, well, uh, uh, anyway, every, every type of galactic alignment, planetary alignment, uh, the pole shifts, uh, Nibiru, you name it, um, all those things are. What I when I say not true, I mean not, don't even have a possibility of being true. They're not, they're not even like for instance the planets are not aligned on 2012. The uh, if you look at a map of the solar system, for instance, the sun and all the planets around it, they're not even close to aligned. That whole thing comes from looking at it from Earth's perspective. Essentially, the same thing happens with uh, with galactic alignment. It looks like that from Earth's perspective, but if you looked at it from the solar system perspective, the, the precession of the equinoxes has nothing to do with our location in, in the universe. It's just, it changes the, the, the stars from our perspective on the horizon. It's all a total joke. Uh, none of those things that are supposed to be the catalyst for the Enlightenment or a catalyst for the cataclysms, um, they're not going to happen. So if... If something happens in 2012, it will be something that we haven't heard of yet. Or it will be, and this is what I think will probably happen, I think that you hit it on the head, that uh, that it will be used uh, to validate um, something. Something that will start to bring us into what I've termed the new New World Order. Um, and the reason is, is that... Uh, I think this is beautifully depicted in the in the Denver airport in those murals. I think yep. the new New World Order is very uh, very clearly shown what's going to happen that this this thing is birthed out of the death of what we now consider the new world order you know the george bushes and the and the wars and the barack obama and everything that all stuff that whole thing is going to seem to be uh sort of sacrificed if you will um and to to appear to be going into something new something totally different something something that looks a whole lot like zeitgeist addendum and we're going to there's going to be great fervor for it is the thing. It's not going to be a half-assed idea. We're not going to be like, oh, well, maybe that's a good idea. We're going to be absolutely dedicated to it because of whatever false flag thing happens that will convince us that life as we know it is nothing as we've thought. 
And so we need that catalyst. We need that thing. And if we have that, then we will willingly join what we've been in this old New World Order uh, uh, trying to fight. And that goes for truthers, too. If, if, it, if a modern truther that believes in zeitgeist and, and you know, whatever, um, if, if they were in a situation where all of a sudden, you know, aliens showed up, they, told, they validated all the stuff that they wanted to believe anyway, which was that they were their own gods and, you know, nothing that they did mattered. And now every, all those old Christians, they've been proven wrong and God really doesn't exist. And now we're going to create a world where everybody's our good friends. What's the need for guns anymore? We're all part of a galactic family. Oh, my gosh, kumbaya. It would be exactly what we've all been wanting, you know? We will willingly join this new system and believe that the old system is dead. We won't fear the government anymore because, after all, George Bush is locked away and, you know, whatever. I don't know if they're going to go to jail or whatever, but you know what I'm saying? It'll be a done system, yeah. that old system um, that can't exist anymore. So we, our guard will be absolutely down if this scenario holds, holds true. So what will happen in 2012? Um, if anything, it will be a deception of some, some point, some kind, and it doesn't necessarily happen has to happen on 2012 to be effective but um but yeah i think that uh, it'll be some sort of false flag around that time uh, i agree i actually yeah made a video that's one of my original videos just uh, simply called is a uh, 2012 is the uh, 2012 hype just a setup for an illuminati false flag and to be honest that's what kind of um you know actually to be honest kind of spooks me you know scares me a little is the fact that they're such massive manipulators. They're masters of manipulation that they could even uh, manipulate some, you know, maybe even really devout, you know, Christians. And and what they'll do, like you said, will probably have to be just something so massive, so undeniable. You know, a lot of times you look at this Benjamin Cram and he'll, some of the miracles he'll post are some of the most ridiculous, you know, small things. You know, and uh, but no, I think for them to be successful, it's going to be have to have to be just totally paradigm shattering just you know get people to be wow and mm -hmm. that's i just hope you know those of us are not deceived because like i said they're master manipulators and we're just lowly humans and we're going up against the forces of darkness so we just really got to be strong and just you know stay true you know ultimately just to god and, and just really try to have our minds pure so we're not deceived that is the ultimate struggle i think right there definitely and you really hit something on that uh they are really ancient they're really smart they were not a match for them intellectually and they they know what makes us tick they they know that we can be easily deceived if if we're told what we want to hear and if our pride's involved um you know a good example i think is some of the alien abduction stuff um a lot of those people like i mentioned are getting just flat out tortured to death i mean they're really not enjoying what happens to them in these in these experiences but they are told that they're really, really special, and this is only happening to super special people, and that um, you know they uh, um, they agree to do this in a past lifetime, and they're going to save the world. And so, you know, let us torture you because you know you're helping save the world. And so this this kind of idea sort of gives the Stockholm syndrome type of, type of thing. They know that they're evil. They know that they are sadistic when they're doing it, but yet they uh, somehow believe that it's. It, it's all good, you know, uh, but that's sort of an obscure example. But that's that that same thing holds true even in mundane ones. No, I mean, yeah, the uh, people loving their captors, yeah, that's an issue we discussed. And, I mean, that's on a broader, you know, aspect too. Just loving the new world order, loving the establishment, which is ultimately hurting them. People have strange ways of doing that. But um, yeah, as far as the uh, yeah, I want to get your take on that. I've read books on abduction. Like I said, I used to be really into it. And why is it that they're they're always hyping? Uh, they're always saying that we're oh we're destroying the earth. You know, it kind of ties into environmentalism. I mean, man, you can see that today, no doubt. Do you think this kind of environmentalism hype is is all kind of building up? You know, is does that fit in anywhere in in your uh, beliefs? Yeah, I think that it does. I think that that kind of thing is is what I believe is is the the new world order is going to look like. Um, it will be using that, and I I'm speaking again of this quasi uh, utopian kind of thing um, that I think is going to have. I'm looking for a particular verse here that uh, in Second Timothy four, um, it says uh, they will preach to us. Okay, so he's talking about like the verse that I mentioned before. 
Uh, for that time, they will come, well, they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away from their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou that are all these things, endure afflictions, and do the work of the evangelist, make full. I'm trying to find this particular verse, and uh, gosh, I can't find it right now, but um, essentially what it's saying is that they will, they're going, going to tell people not to eat meat, and, it was really, and, and not to marry, a really odd thing. Yeah. Um, it, it's like what? Where did that is kind of out of left field? But it really is interesting. I think that um, that kind of is indicative. I think of of sort of a new age uh, theocracy almost. Um, that uh, it'll be a part of it. So environmentalism certainly has you know just in standard New World Order one hundred and one. It has your basic you know reasons for existence. I mean, uh, but I think that you can also look into the Gaia worship of the elites and and, and realize that they're very serious about it. But again, that's just a paradigm for them. I mean, I look at those people that are into Gaia worship or whatever, like whoever it is, uh, you know, at the top of whatever. They they're like pawns. They they have a a, a carrot on the string and a, a paradigm that's being played. But they aren't they aren't really at the top. And the people at the top are are not uh, Gaia worshippers. I'll just put it that way. What would you but say they are? Well, they're they're Satanists. They're they're yep. real, actual Satanists. They're people that um, that are doing uh, very specific Satanic stuff. Uh, this is uh, how do I explain when they're at that level of, of Satanic. Uh, I think a good example of it is the, is one of the most obscure references for a conspiracy type because it's a it's a little weird. Uh, Arizona Wilder, David Icke. Um, now, David Icke obviously has uh, some interesting ideas about this reptilian thing, but I think interestingly, it's actually key to something very important. Um, he got a lot of that information from a woman named Arizona Wilder. Mm -hmm. And she, do you know much about m like multiplicity or, you know, when the people that are created with multiple personality disorders and used as sex slaves and different things, couriers, all kinds of stuff for, by the new world order heard all that stuff. Yeah. Well, to be honest, um, I mean, I've come a long way. I was actually the first real, quote, conspiracy book I got was David Icke. So, yeah, I mean, I've heard everything with her. But, yeah, go, okay. go on. So I do know a bit about that. Okay, good, good. Well, she, um, she was an unhealed multiple by her own admission, which is extremely dangerous to be talking if you're an unhealed multiple because you can have alters come up at any time. You don't know uh, what, if you're, what, what you're saying is true or not or if it was part of the programming uh, because a lot of the programming for a multiple might be a situation where they set it up to make you believe a particular thing. She actually goes on in her story. I believe that her, the, the altar, the her core altar that we were talking to uh, in that we were listening to in that uh, interview of her was genuine. She really was trying to get out of the situation. But I think that she also had fail safes uh, in there, and I'll explain what I mean by that. Um, she t starts telling about her how she knows that these entities were reptilians uh, in that she says um, she went to essentially a classroom is how she described it, where she was told they came from so-and-so, a planet, and they traveled such and such miles and blah, 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 blah. She was like in a classroom setting. Uh, and that's where she got the paradigm that they were reptilians. Now, that's to me, I would read that as that was programming. She was programmed what to see in her job, she, her function, like most multiples, will have a satanic priest or priestess, somebody that knows how to do satanic rituals to call more demons or whatever for more powers. But she apparently was a, a particularly good one. Um, she was used for this particular purpose. Now, her paradigm was totally different. She believed she was, um, I can't remember how she described herself, uh, but not as a satanic priest. Um, but what, when she described the ritual, it was obvious that she, what she was doing, she was getting a, in a giant pentagram and she would call forth what she called old ones. Uh, she believed that the old ones were, uh, ancient reptilians, but these ancient reptilians had no bodies. The way she described them was they were just intensely evil. Um, and they just resonated. She goes on, they resonated this evil about them and that's the reason she went into the thing that's the reason why they had to do all these sacrifices and killing and stuff to bring forth it was all in order to bring forth the old ones as she called them and actually you'll notice that certain satanists will call um them old ones too i heard a recent thing when uh, freeman was doing an interview with uh, uh some satanists or whatever that mentioned old ones as well um but uh anyway so clearly she's 
she's talking about a satanic ritual. What makes that interesting is that she is also, I believe, genuinely talking about this situation being in the midst of extremely high, uh, you know, people like, uh, you know, the king and queen. Uh, you know, she talks about Hillary Clinton. She actually mentions Zachariah Sitchin. Uh, and she, and David Icke in this, is totally surprised by that when she busts that out. And I think that's another... Vi- the, the different reasons that people claim that things will happen, and, and I've, I've been through uh, just about every possible one, galactic alignments of, of both types, astrological astro, uh, and astro, uh, well, uh, anyway, every, every type of galactic alignment, planetary alignment, uh, the pole shifts, uh, Nibiru, you name it, um, all those things are, what I, when I say not true, I mean not, don't even have a possibility of being true. They're not, they're not, even like for instance, the planets are not aligned on 2012. The uh, if you look at a map of the solar system, for instance, in Dogma, um, there is uh, you'll see a representation, I believe, of of exactly that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah that was yeah, totally new to me. But no, I mean, yeah, and and also you mentioned there, I was just taking notes because yeah, you hit on a lot of good points in that. Um, but you say uh, you talk about how there, in the mainstream movies and TV, you see have all these messages of yeah, you know, like the documentary saying that we were seeded by aliens and all this propaganda. And, you know, you can verify that with things like 9-11. I mean, we had, you know, there's a TV episode, The Lone Gunman, about the government flying a plane into the world. Fully expressed that without talking for quite a long time. Oh, no, man, that that is no problem. That would, actually, but I do have to ask a question, and I'm just going to admit I'm completely ignorant on what is the satanic trinity. Uh, the satanic trinity would essentially be... Um, you know, um, the false prophet and the Antichrist, they're, they're always a team. Uh, if, you, if you read the prophecies of the Antichrist, the false prophet, he consistently gives, uh, tries to get people to worship the Antichrist. He creates the image that, and, and the mark and everything. He keeps pointing people back to the Antichrist. Trade centers before 9-11 happened, you know, we have, so there are things, you know, it is conditioning. We have solid evidence of that. So, yeah, I would say 2012... And something involving yeah, extraterrestrials or aliens is a good bet. But in your perspective, I mean, I know this is a prediction, so and, and no one has a crystal ball, but I'm just asking your honest opinion. Do you think um, there is going to be something happen on 2012, but it'll just be manufactured, obviously? Do you think maybe 2012 is just hype for a Illuminati false flag? Uh, if anything happens, it will be a false flag, in my opinion. And the reason I say that is that the Christ, the false prophet, does. Um, and that's essentially exactly what the Holy Spirit's job is in Christianity. This is all a counterfeit that Satan is, has come up with to, to sort of mock God. Uh, the, the other part of that trinity is, the, is Satan himself. He, it says in the Bible that he will give authority and power to the beast and the false prophet, that, that, that uh, they are essentially empowered by him, and and I guess that would be obviously God uh, in in that in that uh, model. So if you actually look at that um, phoenix rising out of the ashes, or the double-headed eagle, as a lot of time it's referred to Albert Pike's book Morals.